with the order of magnitude of that elasticity. And also we can uh, get a few kind of key results uh, about that. Um, so first of all, something that you notice that's very critical, if gamma is, oops, sorry, um, if gamma is equal to 1, what do you get? Which is, what is gamma equal 1? You remember, gamma equal 1 is a case in which uh, the wedge is proportional to A, which means that the, uh, the wedge is flexible. <clears throat> so gamma equal 1 is the case of a flexible wedge, a wedge that responds that is proportional to productivity. Okay, and so what happened in that case? Well, here, very simple. D log theta D log A is 0. So if your wage is proportional to productivity, you have no fluctuations. So what you learn from that is that the only way that you can get business cycle fluctuation in your matching model of the labor market is that the wage is not proportional to productivity. If your wage is proportional to productivity, any changes in productivity are absorbed by the wage. So when people are you know, 5% more productive, the wage is also 5% higher, so that on the firm side, firms have no incentive to hire more workers or fewer workers. The profitability of workers is exactly the same, and as a result, they do not change their size at all. So if you have flexible wage, all changes in productivity are absorbed by wages. The size of firm is always constant, unemployment is always constant, there are no business cycles in your economy. That's really a fundamental result. So the only way you can get business cycle in your matching model is that wages are less than flexible. So you need to have wages that are somewhat rigid. Okay? So that's, that's actually a key result here. So we need somewhat rigid wages to obtain <coughs> business cycle fluctuations. Okay, um, so that means we need to have gamma strictly less than 1. If gamma is equal 1, the wages are flexible, there are no business cycle fluctuations. Okay, now if gamma is uh, strictly less than 1, as you can see from the expression above, If gamma is strictly less than 1, so that you know wages are rigid, they don't have to be fixed, but at least they don't move one for one with, um, with productivity. Then you can see that everything in the denominator is positive, the numerator is positive, then we know that d log theta d log a will be positive. So at least in that case, when productivity goes up, the tightness is going to go up. Um, and if tightness goes up, we know that the uh, unemployment rate is going to go down, we know that employment is going to go up, so you get business cycles uh, in that case. Okay, so um, what we've established here is, and, and that's a really fundamental result, is a necessity of um, wage rigidity to obtain um, business cycle uh, fluctuations in the matching model. If your wages, wages are flexible in the sense of being proportional to productivity, uh, shocks to labor productivity are completely muted and there are no fluctuations in tightness at all and hence no fluctuation in unemployment and employment and anything like this. So we need wage uh, rigidity. So now the other question, so that's the first point. Now I told you in the data it looks like wages are, are 
are, are rigid. Um, you know, gamma is maybe around 0 0.5, so well below 1. And hence, the model uh, is going to predict that we get fluctuation. So in the data, wedges uh, are rigid with gamma maybe around 0 0.5. And therefore, if that's something that uh, we plug into our model, um, so our model can generate um, you know, business cycle fluctuations. Okay, uh, so that's good. We get fluctuation. Now the question is how big are these fluctuations? Uh, so what we can do is what we call a calibration exercise where we plug values for the parameters of the model that are reasonable and we see can, uh, what comes out of it and whether we can match what we see in the data. Um, so let's look at that. We're going to calibrate our model, which means we're going to uh, plug values for the parameters as, as well as the um, average values for the variables. Okay, so what do we need to calibrate? If I go up to my expression, I need to calibrate gamma, the weight rigidity, alpha, the shape of um, the production function, eta, which is uh, the elasticity in the matching function, and we need to put a value for the average value of u, the unemployment, and tau, the uh, recruiter-producer ratio. So that's pretty easy. Uh, so let's start with gamma, uh, which is the wedge rigidity parameter. So this, as I told you in the data, it looks like gamma is maybe equal to 0 0.5. So let's take that value. Eta, eta is a parameter in the matching function. As you will see, uh, in the literature, and in fact, there is a, in the survey of a matching function estimation that I've assigned as a reading, you will see that a typical value for eta is also around 0 0.5. Okay? Alpha parameter of the production function, a typical value is uh, two thirds, so we're going to take that here too. U U is the unemployment rate, average value of the unemployment rate around 6%, so we can take that. Tau is the recruiter-producer ratio, average value of the recruiter-producer ratio around you know, 2%, 3%, um, so let's take 3% to keep things simple, and we'll stick to that. Okay? So these are just conventional um, values for the parameter and the variable, and you, know, you can tinker with that and see, uh, see what happens. So now, what is our elasticity? So, uh, let's go back. The elasticity is 1 minus gamma divided by 1 minus alpha, 1 minus eta u, plus alpha, eta, tau. Okay? So, it's 1 minus gamma divided by 1 minus alpha. 1 minus eta u plus alpha eta tau. Okay, so now let's plug in our things that we have. So 1 minus gamma, it's 1 minus 0 0.5, it's going to be 0 0.5. 1 minus alpha is going to be 1 third. 1 minus eta with eta 0 0.5 is going to be 0 0.5. Well, let's see. Okay. U, we said it was 6%. Alpha is 2 thirds. Eta is 0 0.5. Tau is, we said, 3%. Okay. Now we can simplify all these things. And see, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, get rid of that. Two thirds has three percent, one third six percent. All of this is going to be exactly the same. So we should get one here, 
and then one third of six percent that's two percent two thirds of three percent that's also two percent okay so the elasticity of theta with respect to a it's one over four percent um, so we have one over four percent and that's equal to 25. All right, so now we've been able to compute the elasticity in our model, um, plug in some number, and we get a large elasticity of 25. That's much better, uh, much better, much bigger than 8, which is what we see in the data, which means that the model generates easily as much fluctuations in uh, tightness as we would want to see. And in fact, what we can ask is, we can reverse engineer, so we can say if, Um, if we want an elasticity which is exactly 8, what would be the amount of red rigidity that you need to get that actually? Because red rigidity is something that's hard to measure, and so we can back out from the fluctuations in tightness the value of the red rigidity that will give us exactly uh, an elasticity of 8. So here we've introduced an elasticity here of 0 0.5, and that actually gives uh, almost too much fluctuation in tightness. Um, but it's possible that that, uh, that gamma is actually higher than 0.5, it's not super precisely estimated. And so we can ask, what is the value of gamma that will deliver exactly an elasticity of 8? Um, and so if we want epsilon theta a uh, equal to 8, what is gamma? So why do you And we know gamma will be less than one. If gamma was one, the elasticity of tightness with respect to A would be um, exactly um, zero. So we can redo the same math and bag it out. So basically, we are now solving for eight is equal to one over minus gamma. And what we have in the denominator is what we had uh, there. So we have one third times one half times 6% plus 2 thirds times 1 half times 3%. Okay, these are just the values that we had, uh, that we had plugged in here. Okay, so we get that 8 times... Uh, so here we have 1 third, 1 half, 6%, that's going to be 1% plus two thirds times one after three percent is another one percent that must be equal to one minus gamma and from this so this is you get two percent so you get that um, 16 percent must be equal to one minus gamma and hence you get that gamma is equal to 0 0.84 so the, uh, an elasticity of the wedge with respect to productivity of 0.84 gives you exactly uh, the amount of fluctuation that we see in the data using you know, this very simple calibration. Um, so that's quite actually quite a high elasticity, which means that you need only very little wedge rigidity to generate the fluctuation within the data. You see, you ju wedges are flexible when gamma is equal to 1. We just need to lower gamma from 1 to 0 0.84 to get all the fluctuations in unemployment and tightness that we see in the data. Um, so here we are really not talking about, uh, that's something that a lot of people misunderstand. People think we need fixed wedges to get a reasonable fluctuation. But that's not the case at all. Just a little bit of rigidity actually gives you uh, a lot of fluctuations uh, in unemployment and, uh, and tightness.